Hi everyone, this is a short video explaining why we divide by n minus 1 for sample variances and standard deviations. This is a common question in statistics, and this video is aimed for those who ask out of interest. In most introductory stats courses, there is little need to explain why we divide by n minus 1. All you really have to do is know how to apply the formula, but if you're still curious, here it is. This is a population variance formula. Note that in the denominator, we divide by the population size, big N. Here is the sample variance formula. Now, notice that in the denominator, we now divide by N minus 1. Why is this the case? Why are they different? Let's look at the numerator of the sample variance formula. Now, suppose we have the following sample, 10, 12, 8, 9, and 12. Let's also suppose that we know the population mean, and that it's equal to 10. Calculating the sample mean, we get 10.2. If the population mean is 10, why is the sample mean not equal to 10? Why is it slightly off? Well, this is because of sampling variation. The sample is not perfectly equal to the population. It's simply a subset of random observations from the population. So we're bound to get some sampling variation or randomness. Looking at the numerator of the sample variance formula, we get 10 minus 10.2 squared, plus 12 minus 10.2 squared, plus 8 minus 10.2 squared, and so on. Summing these up, we get 12.8. Now, suppose we calculate the numerator using the population mean instead. Remember, we're told the population mean is equal to 10. So the numerator is equal to 10 minus 10 squared, plus 12 minus 10 squared, plus 8 minus 10 squared, and so on. This gives us an answer of 13. Now, isn't that weird? Why does using the population mean give us 13, when using the sample mean gave us 12.8? Well, using the sample mean will always give us a smaller numerator in the variance formula than when using the population mean. By construction, the sample mean is closer to the observations. The population mean, on the other hand, is independent of the individual observations in the sample and is thus naturally further away. So using the sample mean will always lead to a downward bias in the numerator of the variance formula. To correct this downward bias when using sample means, we divide the numerator by n minus 1, as can be seen in the sample variance formula. Whereas in the population variance formula, we divide the numerator by n. But why n minus 1? Where does this value come from? We now have to talk about degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for a calculation is the number of values in the final calculation of a statistic or parameter that are free to vary, and hence have an impact on the final value of the calculation. In short, it is a number of observations that contain new information. Let's walk through an example. Suppose we calculate the average for the following set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The calculation looks like this. Now, every number in here contains important information for the average. For example, if I replace the 3 with a 5, then this will completely change the final answer. Since all four numbers are critical inputs for calculating the average, the degrees of freedom is equal to 4. Now let's look at the degrees of freedom for calculating the sample variance. When calculating the numerator of the sample variance, one of the properties of using the sample mean is that the sum of each observation minus the sample mean equals to zero. So x1 minus x hat plus x2 minus x hat and so on equals to zero. This is a mathematical tautology. Suppose we know the first term is equal to three and that the second term is equal to four and that the third term is equal to negative 4. Given this relationship with the sample mean, we know that these terms must sum to 0, so the last term must be equal to negative 3. Because the sample mean has already been calculated using the observations, when calculating the variance, one observation has already been used up and is now redundant. When calculating the sample variance, one observation no longer contains critical input, so the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. The sample variance formula loses one observation as it must first estimate the population mean using the sample mean. How does this differ for the population variance? Well, population parameters are fixed. Sample means can vary as they change from sample to sample. However, the population mean does not. Suppose a population mean is 10. 
Well, this is a fixed value. This does not change from sample to sample. If we know the population mean, then we don't need to estimate it. This means we don't lose any observations in the estimation process, unlike when using the sample mean. As such, every observation brings new information when calculating the variance. None are made redundant. Let's walk through an example. Suppose we know the population mean is equal to 10. And suppose a population is made up of four observations. Subtracting the population mean from each observation gives us this. Let's say the first three observations are 14, 7, and 6. We'll leave the last observation as x4 for now. We also know that the population mean mu is equal to 10. Now, if x4 is equal to 10, then this sums up to negative 3. If x4 is 20, then this sums up to 7. And if x4 is equal to 50, this sums up to 37. As can be seen, all observations contain critical inputs for the calculation of the numerator in the variance formula. So the degrees of freedom, the number of observations that can vary the output, is equal to n. So if we look at the sample variance formula, we divide by n minus 1. This is the degrees of freedom. The number of observations minus 1, as we lose one of the observations because the sample mean must first be estimated. The population variance has n in the denominator, as the population mean is known and need not be estimated. So all observations provide information, and so the degrees of freedom is n. Thank you for watching today's video. Be sure to check out our other free YouTube lectures on introductory statistics.